Well, thanks, Lisa, for joining us on this uh on this wonderful whatever day it is. <laughs> <Wednesday. laughs> we've, we've lost all know. semblance of what the days and times One are. One of these days this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted to bring you on because um, you at Hano uh, work specifically with nonprofits all here in Hawaii. And we've been hearing and, and kind of following on how important this time is for uh, our nonprofits to continue to get support uh, especially because it's kind of a, a scary time, not only because of uh, the COVID-19 epidemic, mm -hmm. but what that means for the survival of our nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And we're wondering if you could kind of help make it more relatable to people who are not in the nonprofit sector or aren't aware of what nonprofits are dealing with at this current climate of time. Right, right. So I think it's this is such an interesting um, crisis because our primary goal of containment runs completely counter to our secondary goal of economic development, right? Mm. And so how that applies to nonprofits is, for instance, if a nonprofit runs a senior daycare, a day, you know, a day program, and all the kupuna have had to go back home because of COVID, um, you basically have no program. And if you have no program, whether you, you know, you're not getting fees for that service, or you're not getting um, reimbursed by government if you have a government contract for that service. Um, and at the moment, you might have canceled your fundraiser event, your dinner, or your, you know, your weekend um, like fun run or something like that. That yeah. was bringing in individual donor support for, for your program. And so for nonprofits like that, like that have actual physical programs where they've had to release people, um, it's a perfect storm of no revenue coming in from anywhere. Um, and often when you think about nonprofits, they're just there in your community providing essential services. But basically many of these nonprofits lack the cash reserves to be able to weather this kind of storm, right? This kind of um, crisis. And so you're seeing it with um, like Meals on Wheels where meals are delivered to Kapuna because uh, volunteers for Meals on Wheels don't want to endanger the Kapuna or for them that they themselves are at risk because they're delivering, they're out and about. Um, those types of programs have come to a dead halt. So um, I think what people don't realize is Nonprofits are so precarious in their funding, their budgets right now, that many of them could actually completely shut down. And actually, um, it's very hard to restart a nonprofit once it's shut down. And, you know, a lot of people are thinking about crisis mode right now, right? Like um, food, food service, food security issues um, in different, in co various communities across the state. But I don't know that a lot of people are also thinking about the second stage of this crisis or the, the second tranche, which is recovery, right? Like what kinds of issues are going to plague our communities? I think there's gonna be a rise in domestic violence issues. I think there's gonna be a rise in mental health. You know, a lot of people are traumatized as we speak by, the, by what's going on around us. Um, are there going to be higher incidences of anxiety and PTSD? Uh, you might require more mediation services because neighbors are going to start to kind of like bump into each other and, and stress out um, on each other. So we're not even thinking about the second phase of the, what this looks like, um, even after we've sort of kicked COVID in the butt, right? right. How do these communities repair themselves? Um, and nonprofits are often those providing those frontline services. So if you're in contact with tons of you know, different leaders and nonprofit organizations. Are there things that, uh, conversations that you've had that with them that yeah. are kind of, you wish others could be right. I, privy to? I think, you know, we're already um, lacking the proper PPE, you know, the, the um, protective equipment, right, that hospitals need here in Hawaii. Well, when you think about the the informal and formal first responders that are also nonprofits that are not the big hospitals like the community health centers or those who are providing um, like services to the homeless in those community in those communities. Sorry, Toby's barking. Don't um, worry, ours are going to jump sorry, in on it too, I'm sure. <laughs> this is COVID life. But anyway, um, when you think about those, those types of services, they're lacking the, the protective equipment um, in their interactions. And so 
no one is really thinking about how to like even the the people who are serving at the schools right the the um, breakfast and lunch pickup for families that are needy um, no one they, a lot of those people the volunteers and the nonprofits that are working on those at those school locations don't have the protective equipment so I know there are a bunch of funders that are actually thinking about um, rapidly acquiring that those that kind of equipment and dispersing it out to nonprofits for people um, mm -hmm. for people who are, are used to you know helping by say volunteering and things and now it's kind of a, a little trickier of a situation right because you want to practice social distancing and things right. like that um, aside from monetary donations, have you seen other ways that people have been uh, creatively helping and supporting nonprofits? Yeah, a bunch of nonprofits have stood up some um, like ongoing platforms for virtual fundraising. Um, and I haven't had a chance to actually look at the specifics around what virtual fundraising looks like, or, excuse me, virtual volunteering, oh. uh, what that looks like, um, where people are not actually physically together, but they're actually helping with something. Um, and at the moment, because nonprofits are actually furloughing and laying off a lot of their staff, they're actually, miss they're actually needing a lot of help just running running operations. And so if there is expertise like consulting expertise, those types of gig economy type consultants want to lend their, their mana'o, their expertise to just helping nonprofits get by with their operational stuff. Um, we welcome that. Um, there's, I think we're still kind of new in this crisis of trying to get a handle of how we redeploy our resources, right? So if you've been laid off, is there a way that you could be redeployed to another organization who actually has the money to actually hire you to to fulfill some kind of urgent need in this crisis and we just don't see it's been hard to really see the landscape to see where we fill the pukas right mm -hmm. where the need where the resources are and where the need is and try to match that up um, it's going everything's going so fast um, we're trying to stand up an online resource hub like a platform where everybody can actually see these resources and these needs in the same place and then they, we can actually try and match it up so we're hoping to get that up and running by next week oh wow yeah, yeah that sounds I mean, like a great because help. because there's only so much human capital can do right like you can tell yeah. me what your resource is and i got to go find the need and i got to wait and i have to put it somewhere there's just only so much i can do manually um and hold in my pea brained you know my head <laughs> in terms of the information coming at me um so if we can if we can automate this, I think we could go faster and people can automatically find each other, right? Is there so, a similar kind of, of, of uh, program or, or resource for people who are looking to match up with um, an organization that they would want to support? So I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be people who don't traditionally donate or, or help nonprofits, right. but may hear this and say, I want to help, but how do I know who right. you know, to reach right. out to and stuff? Is there something yeah. that they can look to? I mean, there will be that kind of information in our online resource hub, but at okay. the moment and later, I can give you the websites of those organizations that are already um, taking volunteers or in kind or those types of things in a more um, community based grassroots way, like, mm -hmm. like you're what you're talking about, where it's not terribly formalized, but people really want to get involved, either donate or lend some time, whatever. Anything else that you would want to share? I mean, this is super helpful and and I think it helps um, bring some relevance to to the situation um, that nonprofits are facing. Yeah, I mean, I think it, um, everybody can make a difference. And I think there are um, citizen donors out there who kind of say, well, I can't give much, maybe I shouldn't give. And I think there needs to be a repository for that kind of, you know, small gifts that could in cumulatively really make an impact. And so I know that the Hawaii Community Foundation has set up a um, resilience fund out of their, um, out of that organization. And I think people, if they're interested in just giving even small gifts, I think you can do it that way as well um, by going to the Hawaii Community Foundation's website. Um, I know that Aloha United Way, and it's Aloha United Way particularly for Oahu, is um, also doing a relief fund so um, there might be ways to donate to that relief fund if, if individual citizens want to get involved and provide some financial support in some way. 
Yeah, and we, we saw online um, a couple of people were doing some mm -hmm. really uh, unique and, and thoughtful Mm -hmm. ways of giving where they were saying well since now i'm at home i'm not buying my daily right. coffee they're donating their coffee money right to a different local charity and nonprofit every day and then they share right. it on their social media so one it brings awareness to their right. network of people but and, and they may think oh it's just you know five bucks but that just giving that that kind of energy out there and spreading the awareness of these right. different nonprofits is is so huge so and right. they think somebody else did that with their lunch money. They, mm -hmm. they are donating their lunch money every day to a different nonprofit. So, mm -hmm. you know, every, everybody who says, like, oh, I don't have much to give, I think they have m way more to give than they, than they realize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. Think, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If we could just redeploy some of those resources, that would be really fantastic. Because um, nonprofits really, really need the attention and the help right now. Um, I can't tell you how precarious the situation is for this sector right now. I think it would be good to talk about, like, a lot of people don't know what nonprofits do in the community, and they might mm -hmm. just know about, like, maybe Make-A-Wish or, mm -hmm. or yeah. you mm -hmm. know, like, they don't know all of the different right. ways that nonprofits show up. Yeah, yeah, so there's, so, so the way we kind of um, think about the different missions is in buckets and, and, um, I know this is a little sloppy, but for for your audience, it's just kind of easy to understand this, but there are largely health and human services that provide safety net services, and that could be everything from, like we talked about, kupuna care, homeless services, um, affordable housing advocates and services fall under that as well, um, mental health, domestic mental health services, domestic violence services, um, um, Traditional health, like all of the organizations like kidney, heart, um, diabetes, but you know, those organizations are all your traditional health nonprofits that are actually doing education and advocacy and trying to raise money for prevention and all of that. There's child abuse issues, there's um, substance abuse issues. So th that's the health and human service sort of bucket, right? Of everybody thinking about the well, the health and well being of people. And then there are the, your environmental organizations like INA based organizations that are doing, um, you know, everything from like your beach cleanup to your trail preservation to your um, fish pond restoration to, um, you know, like the groups that are actually trying to do federal designations of preserves, right, to, to keep land um, from being developed, et cetera like Malama Mauna Lua, right, that they're trying to preserve the bay in Hawaii Kai. Um, so those are examples. And these are just, I apologize, these are just Oahu examples. But so that's the environmental kind of realm of nonprofit work. Um, so it's the Sierra Club is an advocate that we often hear about. They're the ones that are um, protecting the the Red Hill well, the water wells that have been contaminated. So they have been um, uh, a representative voice for for sort of these environmental groups. And um, then you have arts and culture. So you have all of the museums, the theater houses, the cultural groups, the hula halal, those guys all fall under the, health, the arts and culture realm. And so that's another thing, Nolan, you asked for specific examples. All the theater houses are dark. Right. Yeah. And that's their primary source of, of revenue is the box office um, revenue. So if no one is is because everyone is social distancing, um, nobody is running those types of programs. And you've heard one after another, these theater theater houses just canceling their spring lineup of. Right. of um, so that's not just ticket ticket. Uh, revenue, but that's not paying actors, right? So the actors are all unemployed at the moment. And so it's just this trickle down effect into, into the economy. If these actors can't pay their rent. And so, you know, it's, it's basically a domino effect, right? Of impact. But yeah, so arts and culture groups are all, they're all kind of shut down at the moment. And on, and there's a lot of, there's an education realm to that too. Nobody's be that's a luxury right now to be doing cultural education practices, right? And then there's the education realm, and not many people realize that um, preschools and K through 12 private schools are all nonprofits. Oh yeah, so, we don't even think about it. Yeah, we often don't think of Punahou or Iolani or you know these these Catholic schools, et cetera, as being nonprofits, but they are all nonprofit. Um, and so they too are um, challenged by 
mostly their online learning, right? Their distance learning issues that, that, that are happening right now. Um, but I, I would imagine that is, as families um, who, are, who have kids in these public private schools are also unemployed, could yeah. they be able to make their tuition payments? And so there's, there's these trickle down issues for uh, educational nonprofits as well. The charter schools are all nonprofit, right? Well, they're mm -hmm. hybrid, hybrid nonprofit. They're overseen by the DOE and by the charter commission, but they operate kind of like nonprofits. And then um, there's your, I know I'm forgetting a group, education, arts, culture, health and human service, environment, um, I know I'm forgetting, but what we think oh, about the humane, uh, humane society is a nonprofit, mm -hmm. right? Animals. Um, sorry, you were going to say something, Nolan? No, I was going to say like, mm -hmm. does like, like the JACL kind of stuff, like human rights right. or something like that? Human rights, social justice organizations, mm -hmm. uh, think tanks are nonprofits, um, organizations like HANO that where we're like an intermediary umbrella organization that provides support to other org other nonprofits. We're all nonprofits ourselves. Um, you don't, Chamber of Commerce is, uh, Chambers of Commerce are um, a different type of nonprofit, but nevertheless, they are in itself, they, they are a form of a tax exempt organization as well, trade associations. Um, I'm just trying to give you other examples of like, you know, we all kind of know the household names of nonprofits like, you know, Boys and Girls Club Goodwill, Girl right. Scouts, Boy Scouts, right? But there are many like the soccer leagues that your sons belong to are nonprofits, right? The PTAs that are a, a part of schools are nonprofits. Hula Halal, Judo Studios, those are all kind of like they're formed as nonprofits. And just if for- that gives you a sense. Okay. Yeah. And even with, with HANO, I mean, you guys have nonprofits who are members of HANO. Just off of that, how many uh, members do you have in, under HANO? Yeah, we have about 300 non nonprofits that sort of belong to HANO as members, but we actually, that's why we chose the word alliance and not association, because we don't just work or support our paying members. We actually support the entire nonprofit sector, and that's over 7,000 nonprofits oh my gosh. statewide in Hawaii. Um, so while it's nice to rely on membership revenue from our paying members, it doesn't stop us from supporting everyone in our advocacy work that we do at the legislature anything that any policy change that we affect actually affects all nonprofits whether they're paying members or not so we're we're going to do that work regardless but we do appreciate the support from our paying members yeah and they do get discounts and benefits by joining us so. yeah and in the meantime you guys have been providing uh, all the nonprofit community with all kinds of resource and education and links to webinars and things to help help them through this time too. We're trying, we're trying to be relevant and quick and timely. And I know, and I don't know if I can mention that you guys are partnering with us on that and as our communications team and doing just amazing work to support us um, in rolling out relevant, timely um, information for nonprofits to consume. And, and I know, I know we've talked about this, but I hope you know that nonprofits are so grateful for the communications expertise that you guys are providing us in order to connect them to resources really quickly because they're really dying on the vine at the moment. So, yeah, we appreciate that when we reach out to Jamie on a Sunday night, <laughs> she, she turns, turns around and gives us, you know, communication, um, our communications right out to deliver to our nonprofits by Monday morning. And so we really appreciate your responsiveness in helping us on that. Now, this is something that is, is exactly what we feel like we were meant to do and to be a part of and, and just being able to, to have your trust in allowing us to help you uh, during such a important time for nonprofits is, is a huge honor for us. And I know even just this conversation was like extremely uh, cl hit close for Jamie because she has been seeing uh, you know, firsthand with all of the articles and, and right. the communication, just how, how scary the situation is for it nonprofits. Is. So um, we really appreciate you taking time to help us communicate that to our audience because I think um, it's, it's so easy to, to just think that nonprofits are gonna be self-sufficient and be taken care of when really this is a very, very, um, important time for them and, right. and their survival right now. 
Right. Just one point that I want to make, and this is a little nerdy and wonky, but there's a lot, there's, you know, a lot of things happening at the federal level where a lot of money could potentially come down to the state of Hawaii and nonprofits are waiting for those, those funding instruments to come right. down to the state level. But we've been hearing on all accounts that it's not going to take, the state's not going to be able to turn this money around very quickly. Like it'll take about three weeks to a month. Mm. So we're we're seeing that a lot of nonprofits are not going to make it to to wait for the oh, wow. SBA loans for things that are coming through Medicare, SNAP, those things that are going to help their clients, um, you know, with supports, housing supports, etc. Um, so, you know, that's another call out is if people, if individual citizens can actually think about helping these nonprofits make it to that three week mark where they can start to get. Um, even unemployment benefits are not going to be uh, realized until the earliest three weeks. So if people have filed unemployment claims, they're not going to get a check for a while. So this is serious business for yeah. everyone, you know? No, I'm glad you, that wasn't nerdy at all. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But I'm, cl yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I think for most people, we just see in the headlines, oh, government has said that they're going to give all yeah. this money on. Da, da, da. This so is money's, think, yeah. But yeah, we didn't, we don't realize. Well, and also it's a really complicated process and it's every day it seems it changes what the right. requirements are nobody really knows right. if they're going to qualify or not exactly. and then even if they do when that money's coming in and for you to say it right. could take you up to a month right like yeah that's scary and then small like you know these small business loans are meant for for usually traditionally for for profit small business yeah they're not really meant for the nonprofit sector and the and and luckily the small business association is actually administration is actually allowing for nonprofits to apply to but it doesn't like the applications are kind of awkward because they yeah. ask for you know the business owner to yeah. put in the, his social security number and nonprofits. The, the executive directors like, am I putting in my social security yeah. number? Yeah, does that make I... them personally liable? Right, 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 right. When they're merely staff, right? They're not owners of these nonprofits. Yeah. So anyway, that's been some of the the snags that um, nonprofits are experiencing as they try to draw down some of this money. And then at the same time, too, their their <laughs> loans. It's not like. Uh, they get the money and then the nonprofits are magically going to be able to afford to pay right. it back too. To so back. they're still going to need right. support and, and donations. Some of them are, right? are low interest and some of them are forgivable loans that start out as loans, but then convert to grants. Mm -hmm. um, but we're really, as advocates, we're really looking out for whether those loans actually really do ever convert yeah. to grants. Like, yeah. will they ever be forgivable? Will the laws change in the middle of all of this? So we're really trying to look out for nonprofits because they're so desperate they're going to apply and then possibly not be able to pay it back if the if the terms change right right i have a so, question are you mm -hmm. able to talk about like um for nonprofits that don't make money off of ticket sales or tuition like that like how are they being affected by what's going on so this is an interesting um oh it's an interesting challenge right because you have nonprofits that are on the front lines that are providing the, the COVID related immediate response. And so funders are moving some of their emergency funding toward that response, right? And, and understandably so, is funders really want to be responsive um, and help. But then there, some of them are reneging or retracting some of that grant money that was already promised to, say, other nonprofits or even to their existing grantees. Um, they're, they're repositioning it. And so for those nonprofits that might not be on the front lines, but they're still, they don't have, a, you know, six months access to reserves. They don't have the cash on hand. They're not terribly liquid. And what are they going to do if, if a lot of these funders reposition their grants or, re, you know, recommit? Or to say that um, you, cannot, you cannot change your deliverable, um, even if you are right now doing COVID related stuff, a lot of the, some of the funders are saying you can't change the deliverable. You have to keep doing what you're doing. Some of these nonprofits, as I said at the beginning of the conversation, if they don't, if they're not servicing because people are sheltering in place, how can they get reimbursed for or paid for the service if they're not providing the service? And if you're not providing the service, but you have staff that are paid based on the service, right? Social workers, um, you know, basically specialists, right, for whatever your mission is, 
and they are not getting paid, then they have to be laid off. And if you don't have cash reserves. So it's this careful, like resources are being shifted in the community, but it's destabilizing some others who are just trying to hang on for dear life. Right. Um, that's why I said this, this whole, it's not like it's just an economic recession. It's like, we, we are, we can't, we can't relate to each other. We can't be in the same room with each other. And that's human service, right? Yeah. Um, so it's just this counter, it's just this, um, it's just really going against everything that helps nonprofits to usually survive. In an economic recession where there is no sheltering in place, a nonprofit actually is on the front line still demonstrating its value. And so it continues to get paid, right? Right. Um, so this is the dilemma right now. Well, it's definitely an unprecedented time and, and requiring unprecedented actions and, and ideas. So we really appreciate you uh, taking this time to help spread some awareness and understanding of the situation. And we're hoping other people can come up with uh, great ideas to help, you know, our, our most valuable organizations like our nonprofits. So thank you so much for yeah, taking no, the time to talk it. to us. On the positive side, because, you know, out of, this is so, so like overly said, but out of crisis comes opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, barring any kind of tragic deaths or serious illnesses within our circles, it, this is a chance to reset, to bring yeah. down silos, to work together, to, to, to find new opportunities, um, um, to be very creative in the way that we we strengthen communities. So I'm actually kind of perversely excited that we can actually do more creative work together. Like yeah. look at the work that we're doing together right now, right? Yeah. So yeah, to end it on a happy note. Yeah, well, <laughs> on an even happier note, you're mentioning how, how you haven't been able to see the sun very much in your fair, but the, the video quality, you just look like a Japanese yeah. movie star. You're just Thank positively you. glowing. So. Um, no, you know what I did? To be on, perfectly honest, I put the, the Zoom um, filter on so oh, you can't see my filter. black head. <laughs> and yeah, you can't see the zit that's coming out on my nose. Um, so that's my little secret for all of you <laughs> Zoom goers is there's a filter that you can turn on. Ooh. I was going to say, your skin looks great. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are looking all shadowy you, yeah, and dark. Because you know what I look like in real life. So you're like, whoa. <laughs> no, well, it's been a long time since I've seen you in real life. So, you know. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so, but right. yes, I do need to get some sun. <laughs> Well, we're, we're disappointed that your son uh, refuses to go out in the... In I know, the, I walk with yeah. you. Well, but you, you know force what? him to I do think, that. You tell him. I I've brought you this because, role. I think he's so grouchy, but I think it's <laughs> because you have a younger one who still wants to be with you, and then your older one is also very... Well, your older one is also just very still loving. Mine mm -hmm. is like, yeah. he won't touch us with a 10-foot pole, and any, any, when any room I walk into, he walks out. Oh, he wants wow. to be by himself. Oh, no. Yeah. I need to have a talk with that guy. I that know. is unacceptable. <laughs> I know. He's grouchy. And then he's just not looking forward to starting school again. So he's like, we're starting to put the hammer down on getting disciplined about academics. And so he's grouchy. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're still able to keep a, a smile on your face. Because if I was well, in an environment like that, I'd be ready to drop the hammer on somebody. <laughs> no, but it hasn't, it hasn't helped that, as you know, I've been on Zoom call after Zoom call after yeah. Zoom call. And, and he just walks by and I'm like, huh? Oh, that was him? I thought that was Derek. No, that was Derek. But no, I'm just oh. saying that we haven't even been able to really interact. Like, even if um, he wanted to go for a walk with me, I'd probably be on a Zoom call, which is terrible, right? Um, so we're just trying to find the new normal yeah. routine and rhythm here at home. Um, and then I'm yelling at him to like keep Toby, our dog, from shutting up. I mean, from barking because I'm on a Zoom call and I'm facilitating yeah. something. And uh, people are like, I know you're facilitating, Lisa, but could you put yourself on mute? Because your dog's really loud. So then I'm like, get, get, control the dog. So he's not, this is not working out very well. My coworkers are not very happy with me right now. Too bad there wasn't a Zoom filter for dog barking. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, so I got it. We'll figure this out yet. Yeah. If, I, yeah. if, if someone wanted to invent a Zoom scheduler so that I had all my Zoom links lined up to my calendar, I guess that you can do that already if it's in the calendar already. Yeah. Right? I'm pretty but sure you can. 
I've been late to Zoom calls because I can't oh, no. figure out which Zoom call I need to be on. And I've shown up oh. in different, different Zoom things at the wrong time. And <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I figured out my filter, though. Yeah, yeah. which is the most important the most, feature. Which yeah, the most yeah. important thing to do. It works perfectly. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to When you see me in person, you're going to be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Reality. <laughs> Well, they used to say like the camera adds 10 pounds, but in this case, the, app, the camera adds layers of smooth skin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a glow. <laughs> All right, we'll try to get some rest and, and continue too. to fight the good fight. Thank you so much for all you're doing. And thanks for taking this time to talk to yeah. us and our listeners. Good. I've been emailing you so much, so it's nice I to know, see it's you. nice to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Okay, take care. You Bye. Too.